June 14, 2008, reverse faulting occurred under the mountains of Iwate Prefecture. A strong earthquake struck at 8.43 in the morning local time. Depending on who you ask, this earthquake had a magnitude of between 6.9 and 7.2, according to the United States Geological Survey and Japan Meteorological Agency, respectively. So both agencies agreed that the quake happened at a depth of around 8 kilometers beneath the surface. Seismic station IWTH-25, located on a mountainside west of Ichinoseki City, would record the strongest ground shaking ever recorded, just over 4 Gs of mostly vertical acceleration. That's four times the force of gravity, G-force is more similar to that recorded in a roller coaster than an earthquake. Just a side note, but I will be using g-forces to measure accelerations in these different earthquakes. There are of course other ways such as meters per second square, centimeters per second square, and gauss. But it's just easier to visualize g-forces. I could just say we are experiencing 1 g right now instead of say 980 gauss or 9.81 meters per second square. It's, it's just easier, so I'm just going to use g-forces. So let's find out what caused this extreme spike in acceleration. But before that, I think it's best we try to find some examples of other earthquakes that cause strong accelerations. First, we have the Northridge earthquake that pulled 1.8 Gs. We have the Kobe earthquake that pulled between 0.8 to 0.91 Gs. There are conflicting sources. Then there's also the 2011 uh, February Christchurch earthquake. That one is complicated. Some sources mention 1.8 G, 1.88 G, and I recall even hearing 2.2 Gs. However, they have since revised it to 1.5 Gs, simply because a lot of the seismometers were quite literally bouncing around with the ground. Like they're not they're not secure enough with the ground. So instead of just recording the purely the ground motion, it also records the bouncing of the seismometers against the ground, which usually leads to some high g-forces. Now this also happened in the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake. It's a magnitude 7.8 earthquake, recorded 3.2 g's, and it turns out it wasn't the ground moving at 3.2 g's, it was the seismometer quite literally bouncing on the ground that resulted in the high accelerations. In reality, uh, once you filter out all those high frequency spikes, the peak ground acceleration in that particular seismometer or accelerometer is more about 1.2 Gs. Now, moving on, there is a paper by the National Research Institute for Earth Science and Disaster Prevention that suggested that this spike in G-forces is caused by, again, high frequency ground motions. Now, what causes this high frequency ground motions? The paper outlined that two parts of the fault responsible for spikes of between 3.9 g's and what that's like about 3.5 g's that's not 4 g's but this is 4 g's like the total like adding up all both the vertical and horizontal accelerations this paper outlined two factors mainly the high amount of stress that's released from the fault so when you push something there will be stress and that stress is in this case is measured in megapascals and this earthquake released in some places, up to 80 megapascals of pressure. So I've decided to do a bit of visualization on how much 80 megapascals is. So imagine this, this block being the fault line, or at least a part of the fault line that's most strained. And this earthquake pretty much released this amount of pressure from it. The second reason is, as I quote from the paper, strong rupture velocity changes which basically means that the fault line did not rupture smoothly there were times where the fault ruptured quickly and then it slowed down and then it goes quickly again and then it slows down again so a lot of other studies actually also suggested that the trampoline effect is responsible the trampoline effect is basically when the ground the different layers of soil quite literally separate during an earthquake so there's an earthquake and then the ground separates because it's being shaken violently so the different layers sort of separate for a few milliseconds and then they sort of bounce against each other and that results in high g-forces. Now this theory makes sense because IWTH25 actually has two seismometers, one located in the surface and one located deep underground. The one in the surface recorded 4 g's while the one underground recorded 1 g's. This reading sort of makes sense because as the earthquake occurs and the ground starts shaking and the layers start to separate, this causes the top layer 
could bounce up the layer below it and crash back down and this result in the spike in g-forces. So I have devised a, a sort of model here of the trampoline effect. So in the bottom here, there is the bottom layer of soil. This is where the also where the bottom accelerometer is, so there isn't one here. This is the top layer and this is uh, the top layer, top seismometer of IWTH25, which recorded that 4Gs. So, because my animation skills kind of suck, uh, actually they don't exist at all, I'm going to have to use this rudimentary model instead. You put your hand at the bottom here, and you can sort of pick it up. Yeah, that one, that last one there is a pretty good example. I haven't found any studies that try to disprove the other theories, so it's possible that either one of them or both of them are correct. Should we worry about this phenomena? 4Gs might be a lot, but this is a high frequency spike. The 4Gs only last a few milliseconds at most, unlike the roller coasters, which I used as a comparison earlier, where the G-forces could have been sustained for many seconds. The short duration and high frequency also prevented this earthquake from receiving Shindo 7, which besides being also this channel's name, is the maximum level intensity of the Japan Meteorological Agency's seismic intensity scale. Which if it did, it would have bring this earthquake on the level of the infamous Kobe earthquake. While this 4G spike might be damaging, it isn't the main cause of the devastation. We should still worry as these kinds of earthquakes do sustain lower amplitude, lower frequency, but still damaging acceleration. Which besides causing building collapses can also cause lots of landslides and rock falls, as seen by this particular earthquake. Most of the 12 fatalities of the Iwate quake are caused by landslides and rock slides, with the single biggest loss of life occurring in the Komanoyu Inn and Hot Spring in Miyagi Prefecture. The building was destroyed by a landslide, killing 5 people, with rescue efforts being hampered by the potential risk of aftershocks and additional landslides. There have been many cases where secondary effects such as landslides and tsunamis can kill more than the initial quake, as seen by the Huascaran landslide of the 1970 Ankash earthquake and the tsunami of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. I have a personal suggestion based on a video I saw made by IRIS Earthquake Science. This video is about how Megatrust earthquakes produce tsunamis. However, at the end of the video, while they were discussing about Alaska, they did mention about how certain parts of Alaska, mainly fjords, they sort of have to have this different way of evacuation. While most places have drop cover and hold on, once the shaking stop, then evacuate, in these places they have to evacuate immediately because the tsunamis, they can arrive very quickly under five minutes because the source of the tsunami are landslides from those fjords, not the earthquake itself, which means that there's just less time. There's less distance between the source of the tsunami, so there's just less time to evacuate, so it's safer to just evacuate immediately. I was thinking that this evacuation procedure could be used in areas at risk of landslides in general. Though again, do not take my word for that. Uh, I'm not a seismologist and I don't work in disaster prevention and mitigation. It's just an idea to spark discussion. Who knows, it might save lives in the future, but for now, it's just for discussions. In conclusion, there are multiple reasons why this earthquake caused such a high peak ground acceleration. The first one is that this is a large earthquake occurring inland at a shallow depth. However, there are also several theories that sort of amplify the shaking caused by this earthquake, mainly the fact that the fault did not rupture smoothly, the fact that certain sections of the fault release quite a lot of energy, and the trampoline effect. Anyway, thanks for watching.